A newborn should cry and start breathing calmly. Moses was laboring too hard. His belly was pumping to try to get air. And he could barely cry and he couldn't move and he couldn't open his eyes. And I would just watch him and I would just wait for him to snap out of it. I was like, is this gonna be the day you open your eyes? And he just lied there and he was so still and he was so beautiful. I had no idea what I was in for. Stomp is a show where people use body percussion and everyday instruments to make music together. One thing I knew when I got into Stomp was that I had no idea how the hell I was ever going to perform the show because I couldn't even understand those rhythms that they were doing. And I was like, when are they gonna kick me out? The next day I would come in and everything we had learned the day before was somehow there. There was a trust that happened. I couldn't see out of my eyes and I couldn't hear out of my ears, but I could do the rhythms that were given to me. Such a cute face when you do it, though. <laughs> Come on, one more time. Just follow me. I always knew I wanted to have kids. I just wanted that experience pretty desperately from like an early age. Yeah, and then that again. Yes, and then and then just. My ex had my oldest daughter, Tavi. So clap, clap, and then you do like that rhythm thingy, then you clap two times. I'm just gonna tuck you in, and I'll keep checking on you. And it went really well. I love you too, I love you too, I love you too. And I thought, I'm ready to do this. In the morning. The midwife came over and turkey baster style pushed some sperm into me and I got pregnant the very first time. It was a good birth. I was so excited and the doctor was so moved. I don't know that she had seen a lot of queer families. Felt like we did it. Now we have our family. Thank you.
I thought there was one kind of disabled child and that was a Down syndrome child. I had no idea the spectrum of disability that exists. Moses has a rare genetic disorder called Phelan McDermott syndrome. Essentially, he's missing a chunk of his 22nd chromosome in all of his cells. So exciting. <laughs> All of his physical systems, his intellectual systems, everything is completely compromised. And then press and then clamp at the end. Now, given that severity, he is remarkably present. Where's Moses? Moses, where are you? Oh, my goodness, there you are. Oh, no. And he's connected, and he looks at you, and he knows you, and he recognizes you. His disposition is extremely sweet. More Superman. More Superman. <laughs> he's just a little kid that likes to be mischievous and get in trouble and play and laugh. It's just a matter of letting go of the child that you always think you're going to have. It felt very much like I lost a child, okay. that he had died. Okay. Yet, I was still there with a child that I didn't understand. I've never felt so desperate before. They needed to go get some more sperm and impregnate me, and I needed to do it over. It feels like such a heavy, heavy burden that I did not know how to hold and I felt inequipped to handle. I felt like I was losing my independence and my ability to be the person that I wanted to be in the world. It was uh, shocking because in the throes of being given the greatest gift of life, which is like birthing a child from your body, but instead, I was given the hardest thing that I'd ever been given. I felt like I lost everything. I wanted him to die. and I wanted him to die quickly. And I didn't want it to hurt.
So when I was 22, I went to Japan to a farm called Body Weather. This teacher of buto dance named Min Tanaka, he would work our asses off all day on the farm. And then around five o'clock, he would invite us to the stage. Farm all day, you are tired, you are raw. That was the point. You don't have your capacities to say no. So your willingness, your heart, your body open so much more. And men would just say over and over, stretch farther. Really acutely for the first two years, I think I cried for hours every day. But then I started to like resource people who also had disabled children. Hear about their children and they sounded so cute and sweet. And they had like lives, like they were talking about school, the spring break, what are we gonna do? It's like, why aren't they saying, I'm devastated that I have been given this child. I don't know how to love my kid and I'm scared, you know? And they would just look at me and they'd shake their heads and they'd be like, we know, we know. I think time handles the grief for you as you withstand it. Then I got together with this one woman who had a profoundly disabled son. His name is Joaquin. And her and her husband came. And Joaquin was in a wheelchair. And they got him onto the trampoline and he couldn't sit up. His dad got on the trampoline with him. And then I, I watched Joaquin just hold his dad's face in his hands and and his dad was accepting that love as enough. And I was like, oh my God, that is like the most beautiful thing I've ever seen. Okay, fly. No, fly, fly, Moses hugs like with complete abandon. He just pushes his way to the essence of my being. It's overwhelming, especially when it's coming from a child who appears to be missing so much. After Moses was born, I waited four years to have another child. <laughs> you dancing, Moses? I need to that and put for that and we get that and put for that. I needed to wait until I didn't feel like I needed to do anything over. Whoa, whoa, you okay, Cash? Oh, you just landed right on the hard thing. Let's brush you off. <laughs> All right, dance it out, dance it out. Dance it out. My time dancing prepared me perfectly to connect with Moses. This 
kid that I had to learn how to love, love so fluidly and with such ease. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Again. He, in fact, was really my teacher of how to love him because he did it from day one just with his complete and total self. He hasn't changed at all. I'm the 